Ouch. Keep hitting these dang lights. Can't just probably haven't broken yet. I gotta get different different lights in there. And this coming Saturday, the high is eight and the low is negative two. He is so pouting. Look at you. Um, over here. Ah, I hit that dang light again. So I've got generator. Um, I don't know what these are. Now it's the morning. Checking the pump room temperature again. And it is 45.8 degrees. And it is 15 degrees outside right now. So, feel pretty good about the pump room. Um, had a little bit of snow and ice. But the weather forecast is getting worse and worse. So, um, they keep extending the time that we're going to be below freezing. So, we're still 10 days out. It would be a total of 12 days now we're going to have below freezing. And this coming Saturday, the high is 8 and the low is negative 2. So we haven't had a cold snap like this in quite a while. Um, so it'll be a really big test on the system to see if it can stay uh, warm enough in here. Also part of this cold snap is the clouds. We are at 70% right now. Um, but it is supposed to be cloudy today, cloudy tomorrow, uh, mostly cloudy next few days after that and uh, of course we're running our heater a little bit hotter i think i got set on two right now yeah it's set on two so we're running that a little bit hotter lately and um so usually we get one bag a day if we're on setting number one um i know it's number two you know the fans using more power it's uh Producing more heat, but it's also consuming more energy. So, very good chance I'm going to have to go ahead and get the uh, generator hooked up. I was going to order the big one, uh, a 240 volt one. Didn't do that. Um, so just have my 110 one still available, so I'm going to go ahead and get that wired up today. And they test it just to make sure that it works okay, because uh, we don't have our whole house or generator or anything set up yet. But it'll be interesting, as long as we've gone without sun four days, and we're going to go more than four days. Uh, not only that, but it's also going to be ridiculously cold. So I think we'll be fine. Oh, ground is a frozen. I was just heading out to dump trash and things, and um, notice my poor bees over there. I'm going to have to get them some food so I've got some um, uh, patties for them it's basically honey and uh, pollen everything all mixed and slapped together I'll roll that up and then stick it into the, the uh, entrance hole for them so in the winter time I knock those down to only about that much about a half inch or so a hole from the come in out of and then I put a piece of insulation on the bottom and I insulate the top with wood chips and that uh, helps keep them warm but if it's going to be below freezing for the next it's already been below freezing for a couple days and we have the whole 10 day forecast is below freezing and even down to negative two so um, they're going to need some extra food if they go through all their winter stores they will die before uh, spring comes so we're close approaching middle of february so after this cold snap uh, things will definitely start warming up uh, fairly quickly once we get into march uh, usually January and February are our worst months and it hasn't been this cold in years um, so I'm gonna have to get him some extra food and sometimes I'll wrap a blanket around him I um, don't know if that does any good or not you want to make sure you don't get moisture trapped in there or they'll start growing mold and they'll die that way too so uh, get him some food and um, hope for the best hope they make it through I've got six hives right now and I want to get up to eight. No, I got five. I don't have many hives. I have five hives. No, six hives. I think I have six hives. Anyways, I was going to split some in the spring and hopefully get up to eight hives. And I usually do trap outs and swarm catches and things like that. But with the work on the house, it'd be convenient if I could just um, just split a hive and, and have that work. 
So anyway, I'll try and if I remember to do a video of that, I grabbed the um, uh, the patties out of the storage unit. Of course, they're outside, so they're frozen. So I put them in the house before I left, and I uh, hope that they'll get thawed out enough where I can actually work with them. It's just it, they kind of like a really gooey play-doh almost. Hope when I get back, I can split those up. Um, roll them up like Play-Doh into long strips and then I slide them into the hive that way. That way I'm not opening anything up. You definitely do not want to open your hives in the middle of winter. Um, you know, the cluster of bees in there, keep it about 90 some degrees, 95, 96 degrees I believe. And the moment you open that um, hive up in the middle of the winter, all that heat is pretty much gone. So you need to make sure you don't open the hive in the winter. So I've got that little slot, I'll slide things in. Some people have freezer or uh, feeders they can slip in. The problem with those is they freeze up. So if you're slipping in a um, sugar water mixture, it'll just freeze. It doesn't do them any good anyways. Where the uh, patties, they can sit there and gnaw on that. When it gets a, uh, somewhat of a warm day, they can go down there and chew on it. It'll thaw up a little bit. That's a little bit of a better option, especially for the winter. To satisfy my curiosity here, I did have the temperature gauge set up higher up. Of course, heat rises, so I decided to put it down low. And it's still showing 46 degrees. So the time and the date is not correct. This thing didn't have batteries in it. So I'm just looking at the temperature there. We're at 46.7 right now. I went ahead and ordered some um, little thermometers to put around the house. It has a thermometer and a humidity gauge. So we can gauge that as well. But um, it's freezing all day. I think it only got up to 16 so far today. And um, pumping still doing good. trying to get me to do things that I don't want to do. I don't know their relationship for it. <laughs> you just did a second ago and I keep missing it. You got it? Is that what you wanted? <laughs> You're showing how cold I am. Recording you, recording me. <laughs> I know. This is for prosperity. Is it? Sure. See, I am doing serious work trying to design stuff. You're just making fun of me. I know. Is it funny? Is something wrong? Is he laying in your bed? Did Peppercorn take your bed? Hmm? I know you're so sad. Pouting. He is so pouting. Look at you. Give me some sad eyes. Aww. He's like, get this cat out of my beanbag chair. Okay, it's next morning and it is kind of bright out, but it's still cloudy. So we're making a little bit of power, but we're down to about 56%. Um, this is day three. And the reason why we're this low is I did turn the heat on upstairs in the mini split when I was testing stuff. So that drew a little bit of power. I only had on for about 15 minutes, so that should have been a whole heck of a lot. But then um, we've also had the pellet stove uh, cranked up a little hotter to try and keep things warm. So I think that has definitely uh, run the power down a little bit. The pellet stove, when it's on its lowest setting, runs a continuous uh, 2 250 watts, something like that. Uh, but when you crank it up, it, it jumps up to around 800 watts. Um, and that really puts a strain on things that's running 24 7. so i'm going to try and get the generator hooked up and on the uh, schneider system um, i had some questions uh, when i hooked this up because these two are my generator typically in the layout this is grid so i've got generator um i don't know what these are <laughs> those are that's my bypass switches and this is my um, uh, uh, solar panel, uh, inverter one, inverter two. These are the bypass ones. So if I'm servicing it, I can turn these off, turn these on. This will still give battery power to the system, but this will disconnect the solar power from the system. And then this is my um, uh, generator. So on the generator, these are set up for 240 volts. And I had a lengthy discussion with the manufacturer as well as the company that I bought them from 
company that I bought them from was adamant that you could not hook up a 110 volt to the system um, after some waiting three weeks or so to hear back from the manufacturer they said no you can it's just that this uh, second pole back here um, isn't to be hooked up to anything and right now it is not so I thought I rigged it up differently but when I came in here I actually had it's a 6-3 wire I actually had my two leads my neutrals right there and my ground is down below already hooked up so I'd actually already wired it that way correctly I thought I was gonna have to rewire something but I took my plug apart and I've got that extra tail just pushed in right there that red wire just kind of pushed out of the way for now until I get an actual 240 volt set up and I can change this plug out so this should work so we've never used a generator before but um, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out so I need to get into the system and make sure that the inverters are set to only bring in about 20 amps of power from the generator otherwise it'll just overload the generator because it'll be trying to pull too much so i should be able to get in there and tell it not to pull that much power and then uh, we'll flip the switch and see if it works well, it's been months since we've had this generator fired up i'm gonna let it warm up a little bit and i just ran a plug out from under the door here running for about a minute so far so I'm going to warm up a little more before I plug that in but this has got we bought this at that auction that builders auction and uh, used it a lot the only problem I had is I had a, a spark plug wire and the solenoid go out on it so I had to replace that but beyond that it was doing fine but oh it's cold out today The uh, low this coming Saturday is now negative 7. High is 7, the low is negative 7. So it's been, you can see it's cloudy. Now it is pretty light. I mean, we're getting, we're getting power off the system right now. And uh, the panels are frozen over. So even with it like that, we're still getting power. Um, we started out at 56% this morning. And we're at... Uh, when I checked a little bit ago, we were at 58 and a half state of charge. So we are getting enough power to charge the batteries a little bit. But I want to get the generator on here, not only to test it, but to get us up to maybe 60, not 60, about 75, 80% or so, just to see how well this works and how long it takes. That's only a 3,000 watt generator. It's going into a 20 amp plug. Um, I set the inverters to only charge at 15 amps, so it shouldn't overload this, shouldn't. I've never plugged this in before, so we'll see how this works. I got the breakers on upstairs, so once I plug this in, it should start should start charging. Uh, it's been going for about three minutes now, so we'll plug this in and see how it goes. Hopefully it won't blow up on me. Usually it changes the nothing's happening. Usually the sound of the generator would have gone up. Burr. I can go upstairs though and I can see if the oh got slipped. Let's see if it's showing that there's a generator hooked up to it. Uh yeah, it's not showing any generator power coming in. So what did we do wrong? I took the cover back off and got power coming through my lead line, not my second line, which isn't supposed to be. So I have one leg of power, and that is the black lead. So let's see, it's supposed to be hooked up to 
L1. And maybe I've got L1 and L2 backwards. Okay. Well, that's great L1. L2 is disconnected. So, let me get into the settings and see if I need to change something there. Well, I'm a little confused here because this generator light should be on. I have checked. There is power going through this line to the system, but not line two. Because it's not supposed to be. It's not hooked up to 240 right now. And the breakers are all, you know, everything's set up there. I got power there. It's going fine. Um, over here. Ah, I hit that dang light again. I'm going to bust that thing. Um, generator controller shows that I have power on the generator. Um, I am actually charging. That's coming from the sun. So I did notice that my generator, uh, this device, is not showing up on my control panel anymore. So I need to look in to see what's going on there. But um, I don't know. I gotta check and see. I tried uh, shutting off. I flipped the switch there and disconnected the solar panel so there was no solar panel coming in. I figured if there was no solar it would automatically kick in from the generator power. That didn't do anything. I changed my amps from 15 amps to 20 amps uh, for the generator power on each one of these. That didn't do anything. So I'm really not quite sure what's going on there now. So I'm going to have to go do some research, make some phone calls, find out why it's not working. Oh, it's so cold. We, um, doing what we can do. So dogs are inside. They're not wanting to come out. Chickens are actually doing, for the most part, good. I did have to bring one of them into the house uh, this morning. She was looking pretty bad, but she's really perked up today uh, since I've been gone. I need to go clean up her cage because she knocked her, her water over, but she just, she was not looking good because I went in there. Oh, maybe, I don't know, inside, inside to check the eggs, maybe around 10, 11 ish. And she was still standing on the roost and she just, she looked terrible. So she's, she's looking like a regular chicken again. Anyway. Oh my gosh. My nose red. It's so cold. So anyway, I gotta go put laundry away, put groceries away now, all that fun stuff. Hopefully the girls are doing what they're supposed to do. Right in their class.